let's go to two ladies to try um he's got a new video out here about Bert. i haven't watched it just yet so let's see what two ladies to try is saying about Bert. he's been fucking smashing it so give two ladies to try a fucking follow um let's see what he's saying Bert crasher admits he's got a serious problem and then let's see what this video is about all right so on the most recent episode of two bears one cave the first 10 minutes of it turned into a therapy session for Bert kreischer which is usually how that podcast is but this was worse than normal Bert was all over the place first he started ranting about how much he hates doctors and dentists because it sounds like they're always telling him he needs to work on things and fix things and get healthier like he starts talking about some cholesterol medicine that it sounds like the doctor told him to take but then i guess joe rogan sent him an article that said this medicine doesn't really do anything and it's not worth taking so then i'm curious to know where this was recorded the two bears one cave because i know a lot of the ymh um subreddit people are really annoyed that two bears one cave um or your mum's house in general they pre-record loads of shit like crazy amounts they bank loads of episodes because i guess they both tour or everybody tours you know christina p Burr, tom so they want to make sure that they have content to put out while they're touring. So a lot of the stuff that you see is stuff that they've maybe sometimes filmed like months ago. So it's not the most, you know, current and they're not talking about stuff that's happening at the moment. So it's a little bit weird. So I wonder when this was filmed. If, is this during the fucking tour that he's on now? Is this off? Is this midway through? Is it before he left? That's what I'm curious to know, the timing of it. Bird starts going off about how he doesn't trust doctors now. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. But then he mentions his dad because his dad's on this medicine. And Tom's like, How old was your dad when he had you? He was pretty young. And then that leads to Bert just randomly going off about how his parents never chased their dreams. He's like, Yeah, that was back when people gave up on their dreams. And at first, it sounds like he's saying it as a bad thing, or it's like sad that they never try to do anything exciting. He's like, My mom wanted to be a dancer, but now she's just a teacher. But then he goes into this thing about how he envies it. And he's talking about how he just sees working class people sometimes. And he says he'll follow them around once in a while because he's jealous that they don't have to think about the problems they have in their life or something. I don't know. This is such a bizarre <laughs> rant, but it sounds like he just thinks normal people don't have time to think about their problems. But I will give Bert some credit here because he at least does show some self-awareness. Like he starts talking about how he's always just been a man child and he's never really grown up this is the one thing sorry to keep interrupting two ladies to try but you can watch the whole thing if you want yourself you know the video is there please don't fucking attack me in the comments after the fact please but the one thing about Burt and I've said this before I was a fan of Burt Cast I used to listen to a lot of his podcast but it got to a point where you know his what's that thing called um his anxiety was very palpable it kind of jumped through the fucking phone um, the anxiety, all that sort of shit, it was just too much for me. And I'm not somebody that deals well with other people's stuff like that, right? Um, maybe why I don't probably have a lot of friends. I just kind of keep myself a little bit insulated, right? A little bit like, that's not nice. Anyway, one thing I did like about Bert's pod, he's incredibly self-aware, way more than you think. He doesn't look like it, but he is. He really is self-aware and he really does understand um, kind of how people look at him. He also understands his place and understands maybe why some people don't like him, you know, like a little bit, like he understands a lot of that. So a lot of people say about him negatively, he knows himself, he says it himself loads of times. And I feel like that makes him a lot, that makes him very endearing in that regard. I think so personally, but let's kind of continue on. Because he's always just done whatever he wanted and doesn't really take on any responsibilities or something. And it sounds like he's going to start talking about his drinking problem. But then he starts going off about how much NyQuil he's been pounding recently. Which there is alcohol in that, so I guess that's just part of the drinking problem. Because he always has to be drinking to relax or go to sleep or go on flights because he's scared of flights. But for some reason, he just keeps referring to NyQuil here. Like that's his biggest problem. Maybe because he doesn't want to admit that drinking overall is his biggest problem. And then at the end here, it's so funny. Tom's like, well, have you talked about any this with your therapist this sounds like something you should be talking about with them and Bert's response is basically like are you crazy what does this have to do with therapy I mean I think this podcast is more of a therapist for him at this point like he just starts going off about all his problems in this clip and he's all over the place yeah. if I could change one part of my body it wouldn't be my teeth you know that you know that you know uh you know but before I, I was gonna get my teeth totally done top yeah, to bottom and, and then they weren't they gonna break your jaw yeah they were gonna break my jaw they were gonna pull out <laughs> well they were gonna remove all my teeth they were gonna remove all my teeth and then break my jaw it was a dentist or quack don't get me started on this <laughs> don't go to dentists doctors are quacks everyone's quacks man you know rogan told me he's like 
Uh, he sent me this article on statins. Sound like you were talking to any of us. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, you know, you don't even need statins. Like they're like, you know, it's like uh, cholesterol medicine. Uh, Cause they're you... like, they're like heart disease is hereditary. Right. It's not. So you're like, you're going to get it anyway. You... <laughs> so why bother? Right. You got heart disease. Why bother? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going with you a little bit here. You're going to get it. My dad's on statins. His blood pressure is perfect. How old is his your dad? Cl- he's on, he's 74. He's on statins. His blood pressure is perfect. His cholesterol is perfect. Your dad was young when he had you. 24? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's back when people gave up on dreams. <laughs> Think about that. No dreams. Think about that. No <laughs> dreams. No, My mom, no dreams. No dreams. Wanted to be a singer? Wanted to be an ice skater? Nope. Teacher. Think about that. I think about that sometimes when I see dudes like get in an elevator with like a briefcase and then work boots. Yeah. And then like jeans that are kind of like, and then a shirt that's a collar, but it's got a name right written right here. Uh-huh. And you see the dude and you can just see it in his eyes. Like I killed it today. I busted. Yeah. But like this doesn't, I, I'm not getting a, an award for this. This is yeah. just work. Yeah. And I see that and I look up to that guy. I go, I wish I had what you have. Sometimes I'll f- Huh. Interesting. I thought he was going to go down the route of like a Brent Joe Rogan thing saying, oh, um, I can't ever see myself doing that. That stuff is horrible. It kills the soul. Humans shouldn't be working on work sites or in office cubicles. Work is evil. I thought he was going to say that sort of shit. That sort of gobbledygook. Everybody should be their own business and their own entrepreneur. That whole Gary V. Ra Ra talk. But he's actually saying that he actually envies people who have regular jobs and don't have dreams because they have a sense of i don't know pride i guess in their work a sense of achievement a sense of place in society that maybe he doesn't have being an adult court gesture that makes a lot of sense this is the thing about being a comedian this is what's funny this is what you should be tapping into for your comedy the ridiculousness of your life that you essentially get paid to be an adult baby to be an adult version of to know to be an adult version of a frat boy that's essentially what Burt Kreischer's identity is and people like the fact that you remind them of somebody that you went to college with that never grew up but you're just you're the one sort of like um rare case you're the one sort of like exception that you made it and you became a multi-millionaire most people that are like Burt that you go to school with or college with who never made it in the uh, you know athletic sport that they maybe pursued who were you know, maybe the funniest guy in the class, but never pursued comedy, just end up working regular jobs, right? They end up just maybe working in the jobs where maybe you end up tapping out late in life or early in life, but he lucked out. That should be the funny bit of his comedy, the fact that that happened. But for the longest time, he was acting like he was the special, like he was the chosen one, that, you know, I'm better than you guys because I pursued my dreams, I did this. So this feels like a little bit of a half-life or yeah, half life, quarter life crisis that he's going through, <laughs> where he's suddenly starting to realize that maybe comedians aren't the most important people in the world. <laughs> maybe because you're Joe Rogan's friend, no one else. Typically, Joe Rogan's friend doesn't mean you actually matter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the wide majority of people don't give a fuck. They go do their job. They tune into your shows. They clock out. They continue all their lives. Maybe he's realizing that. I don't know. Follow them down to the bar at hotels. <laughs> And watch them, watch them order. And you know, they don't think about statins. They don't think about, they just think about like, I killed it today. You got a cheeseburger? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And they're like, yeah. What, uh, what do you want to drink? Oh, double jack on the rocks. Yeah. And, and then you watch them and you go, yeah, man, that's, that's the majority of this world is just getting after it day to day. Sure. And you look at pussies like me who wake <laughs> up at midnight and exactly. they take more NyQuil because they don't want to sit with their thoughts. I can't, get know, on I, airplane. I can't get on an airplane. I mean, I look at like men. I am so far from a man. I- Honestly, how can you not like this rant? I'm sorry. How can you not love this rant? Will you ever hear this rant from Brendan? Brendan probably needs more of this self-reflection than fucking Bert. It's a bit crazy. It's a bit, someone said, Adderall-induced. It's a bit schizo and all over the place. But this is legitimately the sort of like, yeah, Richard said, existential crisis that Bapa needs. Brendan needs this existential crisis. He needs this reflection. He needs this fucking inflection point to happen in his life sooner rather than later. We realize fuck, did I fuck it all up? Did I squander the opportunity of a lifetime? Was I given a career on a golden, on a fucking golden, silver, platinum, diamond, diamond encrusted platter by one of the biggest people in fucking media in Joe Rogan and I fucking pissed it all up the wall?
Did I fucking isolate myself from all my comedic peers because I thought I was better than them? Did I completely diminish and dismiss the, you know, objective criticism from my fans because I thought I was better than them also? Did I? Can I recover from this? Did I, you know, incorrectly associate myself with rapists and pedos for the betterment of my career? And now it's fucking blowing back and obviously harming me in the long run. <laughs> That's what he needs. This is actually epic. I am so far from a man. You know, like there's a, some self actualization. What is happening, happening today? Like I'm so far from like a man, like a man, right? A man who goes, yeah, everyone else first, then me. It's not, gonna... <laughs> it's not how I think. I go me, and then oh, there are other people here. Yeah, like I wonder. If what that, do you think that is, though? I don't know. I wonder if my dad. I wonder if I never became a man. Like I, if I'm still a boy. You know, there's a definitely boyish quality to you. <laughs> Did you drink a whole bottle? I went through it. Yeah, I went through a lot of the bottle enough that Pete, I think, wrote, marks a line on my Nyqua bottles. I just can't help it. It's so great to disappear. We're five minutes in and we are thick. Were you? Will you talk to your therapist? Jesus Christos, he's legitimately going through it. Legit going through it. I don't like the issue of blaming the dad. Because if I remember Burt Kreischer's come up, there is a story about him being hit with a baseball bat by his dad, right? Inadvertently. That felt like it a little bit on purpose. <laughs> it felt like a story. It felt like the way he explained it, the dad kind of did it as a way to kind of teach him a lesson, grow up a little bit. I don't know. It kind of felt a little bit, something happened, you know, I don't know. So he's never really been an adult in that regard. Spending, what was it, like seven years in high school or something or college, insane um and essentially being babied his entire career and being kind of indulged even from his wife as well leanne who kind of in, indulges him in all these fucking you know baby kind of antics and shit that hasn't helped but i don't know if you can really blame the dad that's the only thing i can say it's probably a little a lot of you less about the dad reading your upbringing it's not their fault that they were able to be successful in their lives and they quote unquote gave up on their dreams to provide their all their kids with opportunity um to be flipping you know successful and have an opportunity to do something maybe i don't know first about any of this like will you bring this up you know uh no this is the stuff to talk about no this isn't this isn't therapy stuff yes it is when you talk about men versus me that is, dude, you're, you're literally saying, I wonder if I have like this arrested development, if I'm still a boy, I'm not, I, why do I put myself for like that stuff to talk about with a therapist? What are you talking about? I, mean, I put myself, here's the thing is, is I'm, I'm very, I'm very like, I'm not, I'm self-correcting, but I'm more like, uh, I'm more like more punitive towards myself. Like I, I just, I'm more apt to shit on myself than I am to find, like if someone that knows me sat here, they'd be like, first of all. You, you put a lot of people in front of yourself. Like, you know, I know I, you. Yeah. But like, I, I do put people in front of myself all the time. Sure. But like men, like grown men, I, you know, how many times I look at a guy and I go, I, I think every man's older than me. I think every dude's older than me. Anytime I see a dude, I go, he's got to be older. Except for Asian dudes, I always think I'm older than them. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, there's a lot, even like older Asian dudes, I go, I'm older than he is. <laughs> black dudes, black dudes. Yeah. I'm older than all of them. All of them. When I see black dudes, I'm old, I always think I'm older than them. And then I'm like, shit, we're the same age? Like, I'm older than Nori. Yeah, so that clip is wild. He's going through it right now. I like how he says, if somebody knew me was sitting here, they'd be like, oh, none of that's true. Like, Tom isn't sitting right there. And it's just fascinating what Bert thinks a normal person is like. Like, they're so busy working and getting after it that they never have time to worry about their problems. But there probably is some truth to Bert having too much free time and this being his job where he can just sit around and drink all day. Obviously, that is not helping at all. But it's just weird that he acts like he's the only person that has anxiety or worries about the future or worries about their health. Like, normal people just never think about those things. So I think he's having some kind of midlife crisis or something. Like, also seeing Tom, like, get in shape and get a lot healthier... He's probably like, man, I've only gone in the opposite direction. Like everybody's comparing pictures of Bert like three or four years ago to him now and Tom three or four years ago to him now. So he's probably thinking about that. And then also, I think he just had a meltdown at somebody's bachelor party recently or something like that. So maybe that's getting to him as well. And just like, he probably just went to the doctor and the dentist, they told him all these things. So there's a lot going on here. And then at the end of the- And also just to kind of piggyback off of that, it was clearly, I always thought like, very um um inauthentic the way he would kind of act like he was happy the way he was you could always kind of see through it 
the whole like being drunk all the time and being fat all the time he's clearly not happy the way he is clearly but he just kind of has learned to kind of cope with it or has learned to be okay with it because essentially being this kind of fat alcoholic dude has basically made him a multi-millionaire that's basically provided him with a lifestyle that he's can do what he wants he's given his kids futures in terms of going to good schools and paying for college and looking after his wife and having a nice home so it's in some respects it's worked out for him but now as the time has gone by he's now starting to realize that indulging himself in all his vices and giving himself constant treats has maybe left him in a place now where he doesn't appreciate the things that he has and he's now pining for a life of somewhat ordinary ordinariness to kind of get back to some level of appreciation for his life when really and truly he probably just needs a bit of self-discipline he needs some structure in his life he needs us maybe a set sleeping schedule a set workout schedule um you know you don't hear him talking about writing anymore really he used to speak about that often sitting at a laptop writing jokes and shit so all that stuff has kind of gone by the wayside it's all turned into one big party and one thing i know about partying and drinking a lot is that usually what happens is that you always crash and when you crash you usually have these existential reflective moments where you start to fucking question all your life choices because you start to see how much time those things waste it's really only something you can only experience when you go through them when you drink a lot and you do a lot of drugs you realize it takes up a lot of your time for you scoring the stuff indulging in it going out um and then kind of recovering on the other side it can sometimes and especially if the older you get it can sometimes takes weeks to get back to some level of normality and then you start to realize that all those times that you've been doing that sort of stuff it's maybe harming your brain um it's harming your cognitive abilities it's harming the way you emote with people um you know as joey diaz always says like sometimes doing drugs and doing live performances and shit can numb your ability to connect with an audience i'm sure it numbs your ability to connect with human beings like your friends and family it can maybe destroy your relationship with certain people destroy your ability to hold on to a job um destroy your ability to look after your kids and shit bloody blah 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 and then you start to compare yourself to all your friends around you who are the same age or within your peer circle, you start to realize, oh shit, all the time I've been wasting, indulging myself in all these vices have wasted a lot of time. And all the time that I should have been working on myself, I should have been pursuing a life of meaning outside of just indulging in myself in stuff. It has now been wasted. And now all these people around me have got maybe less money than me in a bank, but they seem way more happy because I'm essentially eternally chasing a dragon that kind of what happened so I think he's just suffering a big crash of being on it all the time because he's been on party mode for the best part of what four years maybe more because of the movie he's been doing the movie for a while so it feels like the movie's been one big party he's been in party mode for basically five years the last five years he's been in full party promo mode for the machine and all the fucking touring that was meant to be done for the Tories on at the moment. It's a lot. So it's no surprise he's crashing. <laughs> Diego Poons, in conclusion, Bert's not going to make it to 60. Bro, you need to chill. <laughs> That's a bit too much. But again, I always say I'm going to be the person. My hot take McGee, hot take Aggie moment. I've always said it. Bert Kreischer will outlive all his comedic peers, including Joe Rogan including the people that take their health extra extra seriously like even the guy across from the room from him in tom segura he's just got that luck of the irish he's got that fucking you know he's he, he's just got it unfortunately he's been able to skirt by life the way he is now with no real big major health issues i feel like he's going to be the kind of person who we all know in our family who smokes 20 pack of cigarettes every single day twice a day sometimes never got cancer never never ever ever and just died of old age i think bert's gonna be the same guy he's gonna outlive everybody i guarantee you out of everybody I podcast he goes on another monologue about how he might be gay or he never had the <laughs> chance to be gay or something mm. it's crazy what's going on here but tom has to talk him off the edge he's like mm. dude you would know by now if you're gay like it's pretty simple do you like guys or girls it's not that complicated but bert's like well when i was younger it wasn't as accepted and i haven't tried it yet so i mean it's headed in a crazy direction here i don't think i've ever been afraid of being Dicks. gay yeah 
the funny thing is, if, if Bert went to Bergheim, he'd be really popular. The bears there would fucking love him. He'd have a definite appeal. If Bert went to Bergheim, he'd get he'd get major, major attention. That's the funny thing. <laughs> Maybe in LA, he's like a f- two or one. But if he went to Berlin, he'd fucking get it. <laughs> but I don't think I was given the option to be gay. Meaning, like, I, it wasn't presented as, like, a, an... A, an and an equal option is being straight. Yeah, but I think it, here's the thing, man. I don't think you really need the option. You either you would know what you're attracted to. You know? I don't know if that's true. You don't know what makes your dick hard at this point. <laughs> like you do. No, no, but I, but I, I but I don't, okay. So wait, in this point in history, am I like? It seems like I'm an outlier in sexuality because it oh. seems like seems like the majority of this country is gender fluid so what uh, he got into the list of that guy with the boots and the briefcase and what he wanted to suck him off because he's a construction worker he's got that kind of rugged look about him right mm, right good honest job uh, nine to five uh, pension uh, you know good work-life balance structured living uh, leader of men uh, what happened <laughs> that guy with the boots and the lift really got got him tingling in it no what well, it see it seems like well i'm watching kids yeah it's, and the way it's, kids, it's happening different. With kids the conversation's different but it's, no. it's like it's like the, everyone's cool with like yeah hooking up with the same sex whereas right. like i wasn't presented that option i mean that was not like a presented but does the idea of that make I don't think everyone's cool with it, to be fair. I think that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I think he's watching too much Entourage. I don't think there's a, every kid out there is happy to hook up with <laughs> the same sex because they're just kids. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. I think that's just social media. That's a very a very concentrated group of people. I don't think all these fucking Gen Zers are just hooking up, having loads of gay sex. I don't think that's the case. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Just because they have pearls on and paint their nails and they fucking wear crop tops, it it doesn't mean anything. It just means they're just wearing fashion that kids are into. <laughs> but it's looking at all these kids and thinking, <laughs> I want to be gay too. You know that like, that woman, I want to be ninja. He's like, I want to be gay. Oh my God, man. I swear to God, this, this guy is fucking incredible. <laughs> Make your dick hard. No. No, that's what I'm saying. Though. You're not gay yeah but i don't think it's almost like if i was like hey i never had indian food okay yeah (laughs) so i never craved yo this guy this analogy please please look at tom's face this analogy analogy. (laughs) how do i know what i like unless i've not had it (laughs) <laughs> it's like wine or beer. Everyone, I think, usually hates wine or beer the first time you sip it. After a while, after sipping it some time, you get used to it and you're like, you know what? I kind of like this now. So maybe this is what he's thinking about. <laughs> about being gay. That's how that's how sexuality happens, right? That's how you figure out what you're into. You're like, hmm. Bit of that, bit of this, bit of, like it's a buffet. I didn't like this. The, the the fucking potato balls are a bit off. The chicken wings were good, but they needed too much sauce on it. I like the fucking spaghetti. I like the fries. You know? <laughs> Indian food. I yeah. never craved it. Yeah. I was never like, God, oh, man. I mean, I heard about Indian food. Yeah. But I was like, all I heard were like the bad things. And then you have Indian food and you're like, oh, shit, man. I like. It. I didn't know I liked Indian food. Had I known about Indian food, you I can go food with a guy, and and if 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 you feel like just the option is there, that it might change. I just don't. I think you would have done it by now. You would, have, would realized, have definitely tried it. Yes, dude. You'd be look. You uh, first of all, you'd always be like, your 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 brain and body would be posturing to try to get closer to men in a sexual way. It wouldn't just be like, oh, I wish that option had been here. For real? <laughs> of course, man. You'd be in that booth right now. But where are like, our friends? Where are where are all their our friends? shoulders? Good job where I work today, you know. Where are all our friends that are gay? Like where mean? are all our friends that like that got married, had kids, and then are like Yeah, so I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Leanne's gonna be so happy hearing this. <laughs> it's bad enough when they're interviewing porn stars and shit. And talking about their second wives and stuff. I'm sure Leanne Crash is going to be super happy rewatching back those clips. 
<laughs> oh, Bert Crash is a fucking legend, man. What the fuck is he doing? What the hell is going on there? <laughs> what are we doing here? Here, this is something else. This man needs to get control of himself. You know, maybe Joe Rogan needs to send him an anti-LGBTQ article to get him under control. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account. I have a bunch of videos up there. I post every week. I just posted a video about Mark Harley, you know, Brendan's former handler. He's back in the picture. He's trying to expose Brendan once again. And there are probably over 30 other videos on Oh, but big up, big up fucking to each tribe. All right, absolutely. so in this video, I'm going to be taking absolutely. a look back at a class. He's absolutely killing it. Big up him. All right, so on the most um, recent episode. It yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What a weird one, that one, isn't it? What a strange one. I don't really know what's going on there. Um, clearly, but struggling. Clearly, he's going through it. And it makes sense because he's at the best point in his life now, isn't it? Um, career wise he's absolutely smashing it in terms of his live shows um i don't know i don't know what people are saying here in the chat someone said he claimed one podcast and takes 10 mg a day of his annex which sounds like it would kill somebody whoa whoa yeah he does take a lot of xanax i've heard that to be the case what's the clipper saying here mods keep timing me out dude put them in check what are you doing, the Clipper, brother? Thank you for the Super Chat, but what are you doing to get timed out? I'm not seeing what you've been doing. Maybe maybe you need to... Um, what Have you been saying racy jokes? <laughs> I don't know what's been going on. Are you saying racy jokes or something? I'm, not, I come, I'm scrolling up here. I can't really see. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is already too far. I can't see some of the stuff that's gone by. Thank you for the Super Chat, though, brother. Mods keep timing me out, dude. Put them in check. I don't know what's going on. Maybe, again... The mods are in charge. I can't check the chat all the time. So maybe you said something racy. Um, now that you can talk, um, hopefully everything is chill. Um, <laughs> Uche, he's attacking. <laughs> okay, if you're attacking Uche, then I'm going to I'm gonna bow to the knowledge of Uche. Uche is my G. And whatever Uche says goes. So if Uche is timing you out, then I'm backing her. And if so is Koila, I'm backing him as well. So... Um, just, just relax, brother. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Um, <laughs> he's attacking. <laughs> so, what do you think is going on with Bert? What do you think is going on with Bert? Bert's suddenly realizing that maybe he's also realizing that not everybody gives a fuck about him. That's also something because he has this complex that everybody in the world wants to be his friend. And everybody in the world wants to party with him. And everybody in the world wants to be him. Maybe, you know, maybe he has a little bit of that in him as well. And he started to realize that regular people don't give a fuck. Um, they just tune in for the pod. They like his content. They watch his specials. They go to his shows. They have a glizzy. They chug on some fucking Bud Lights and they go home. They don't really care too much anything more about that. Maybe that's what he's realizing. I simply do not matter. That might be what he's realizing. <laughs> Either way, it's really fucking crazy. It's really insane to see that happening in real time, to be fair. But again, I've always been, I always had a love-hate relationship with Bert because he's super insufferable, but he is also incredibly, incredibly self-aware um, to the point where I think he's probably one of the better ones in understanding how he's perceived and kind of how some people, or understanding also the reason why some people don't like him. He's someone that is happy to say, yeah, I know why you don't like me, but I'm also not going to change to make you like me, which I like the most. Um, he doesn't blame people for just, he doesn't paint everyone out to be a troll and to be a bad actor and shit. No, he actually says, no, you may like me for, not like me for legitimate reasons. And it kind of is what it is. And I'm okay with that, to be fair. I'm really, really okay with that.